think we are just about ready to go. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll do some introductions and then we'll, we'll move right into it. It gives people just a second to get settled. So uh, good morning. Thank you again for joining us. I'm Ann Stefanik. I'm the founder and CEO of Canopy Studios. And today we're hosting a webinar just for UCSF about planning your site with user stories. If you attended our last webinar, you'll know we had some email issues and folks didn't get all our confirmations. So please let me or Jill know, you can either add in the chat uh, to make sure that if you didn't get the a recording and so forth and the assets from last time, we can definitely get those to you. And um, if also you didn't get your confirmations this time, let Jill and I know, cause we're trying to, you know, beat the, beat the system so we can make sure you get the information in a timely manner. Okay, so just a little bit of a heads up. Canopy is a web shop. We design, build, and support websites for clients who want to make a positive impact. And a bit about Tim Tufts. He's our director of project success at Canopy. And Tim really keeps all of our projects running smoothly. He helps clients understand how to achieve their goals by leveraging Canopy's experts as efficiently as possible to make dreams come online. Um, Tim's work is more than just keeping track of budgets and deadlines. He actually guides the clients through overall project life cycles, acting as a point of contact, an educator in best practices, an interpreter for client needs. So because uh, Canopy is, is super in love with helping clients, we also wanted to let you know that Canopy is offering 25% off any of our growth plans, which those are just targeted small bite plans that are really focusing on the uh, impact of your website anywhere between 40 to 60 hours. You can email us at hello at canopy.com. That's hello at K-A-N-O-P-I.com. And uh, I will now pass it over to Tim. Hi, everybody. It's, it's good to all see you here today. We're going to be talking a little bit about user stories and specifically what, uh, what you can expect when it comes to planning uh, your website build. Uh, this is just a quick slide with the upcoming summer series session. So on July 22nd, we have the How Websites UX Impacts a Brand. Keep in mind if you want to check that out. This is going to be our agenda for the day, or for the call today. So first of all, we're going to talk a little bit about what is a user story? Uh, what, what, why should you use user stories? Um, getting started with user stories, user stories in practice, so actually putting them into action. And then we're going to have some time for a little bit of, uh, of Q&A. So let's, uh, let's get started. And so first and foremost, what is a user story? So defining a user story, it's a summary or a statement that provides an outline of the work that needs to be done as well as the value it will bring. And while that may sound like a very vague sort of definition, we're actually gonna have a few examples for you in, uh, in an upcoming slide so you can get a much more concrete example of what those are. Who creates user stories? So user stories are typically created by a project lead. Uh, most commonly, it's associated with a technical architect, so like a developer, for example. Uh, but really, anybody can create a user story. The idea is that whoever is creating that user story is somebody that's well-versed in the needs of the organization. The user story, once created, is then also reviewed by somebody that will actually act upon that user story. So that might be a developer, it could be a designer, a copywriter, et cetera. When do you use, when do you create user stories? So user stories are typically created in the planning stages of a project, but an important thing to know is that they can be adjusted at any point during the life cycle of the project. So they aren't written in stone. Uh, they're actually fairly fluid as we're going to see in a upcoming uh, slide about user stories in practice, uh, but they can always change as the uh, needs of the organization change as well. So the user story formula, this is really important to remember because it provides all the information that a team needs as far as what is, um, what is being acted on. So as a user, I want or need to something, action, take an action, do something, need a feature, so that I can X, Y, or Z. And just to, uh, this might seem a little, little odd or a little uh, vague, but just to give you a couple sample user stories. So these are actual real life user stories that you might see with regards to, uh, to building a website. So as a user, I want to be able to search for content so they can find it without the navigation. Uh, as a website admin, I want to be able to promote content on the homepage so that it appears more prominently to users. And as a user, I need a means of navigating the site so that I can find additional content. 
So all examples of real life user stories, um, we see that there's, they're touching on those four different components that we mentioned in the, uh, in the earlier slide. And we'll break down those components a little bit more in an upcoming slide as well. So why user stories? So this is sort of a breakdown of those different, uh, those different aspects that we saw in that earlier slide. So as a user, the who, it's telling us who is the person that is going to actually be using this thing that we'll be making. Uh, it's really important because it defines the, the end user, whether that be somebody that's visiting the website or the content administrator. So somebody that's actually loading the content and creating the content on the back end. The I want or need. Uh, so this is actually not something that's traditionally included in user stories, but I think it's really important to include because it sort of defines the urgency of the item. Is it something that you absolutely can't live without, or is it simply a nice to have? It is, is it something that you, you'd like to see, but um, in the end, it, it doesn't necessarily need to be included. To action, so the what. So what is the thing that this user uh, wants or needs? Uh, what are they looking for? What is the feature that they're looking to interact with on the site? Uh, it's important to really define that, that action. And so, so that reason, uh, the why. So why does this person need that feature on the site? Uh, it's really important to, to touch on that because leaving it without the why is sort of hanging out there. You know, you don't, the, the person that's going to be working on this particular item doesn't really understand the full context of, um, of why they're, um, they're building out this thing. All right. And so the other aspect that user stories really fulfill is, is the start of a conversation. So while an individual might be creating these user stories, it's ultimately up to the overall team to review. The user story is really the catalyst for the conversation. Um, it helps everybody on the team gain a better understanding of a user's needs through the, uh, through the formula of the user story. Uh, it also helps to determine the priorities of the organization. So I mentioned that want need aspect of user stories really helps to shed light on the, um, the scope and the focus of the work. And then it also established is a foundation for functional requirements. So user stories are the stepping stone to actually defining the functional things that are going to be built as part of, um, as part of your, your site build. So how do you get started with, uh, with user stories? So first and foremost, what are you trying to accomplish? Are you building a brand new site? Is this something that you're going to be starting from scratch? Uh, is this fixing up an existing site? So maybe you already have a website and you're just looking to make some improvements. So maybe it's just changing the design a little bit or uh, making some improvements to the back end content manager. Or maybe you're just moving to a new platform. So maybe the overall user experience of your site is fine as is, but you wanna move it to a new platform. So for example, if you're moving from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8, uh, largely happy with how things are, but you wanna just move it over to a newer CMS. So it's really important to, to keep these things in, in mind because it's really going to define the focus of the effort. You know? So if it's a brand new site, uh, you might be looking to improve the design. You might also uh, be looking to do a little bit of audience discovery. So those are important things to keep in, in, in mind when you're starting to work on user stories because it might have a much larger impact than just focusing on the functional things of the site. So where to begin? So first and foremost, appoint a writer. So this is going to per be the person that's actually going to write the user stories. They'll sort of take the, the first crack at, uh, at writing these out. It should be an individual that's well versed in the goals of your organization and also the needs of your users. So they should really have an understanding of what those folks coming to your site are looking for, what they're looking to do, uh, what their needs are, but also where the site may, where, where you're looking to take the site in the next iteration. The next item is epics. And so We'll, we'll touch on these a little bit more later, but epics are essentially a way of classifying user stories. You might find that as you start to write them, uh, there might be sort of a commonality between the different stories. So you might have multiple stories related to the homepage or multiple stories related to the navigation. So epics are really a way of just sort of categorizing them from a, from a high level. 
Um, it can also sort of help to define where you need to create stories. So you might just create epics for each of the different sections of your site, for example, and then write stories for each of those sections. And then stories. So once your epics are created, you can really dive in and start creating stories. So those stories are going to help to flesh out the epics, the, um, the specific things that each of those, those areas need. Uh, but then it's important to note that you can always go back and modify your epics as you identify additional, additional areas or additional categories of your site. Before the, the user stories can really be used, and this is kind of going back to what I said about collaborating with the team and having a conversation, is reviewing the user stories with the, uh, the rest of the team that's going to be working on them. A uh, user story on its own, it's really just a formula that's defining those four key areas, the who, the what, the, the how, or the why. Um, and then the requirements are really the, the nitty gritty details as far as what needs to be done to bring this thing to life. So for example, we had the, uh, the search was one of the example user stories that we had earlier. So a requirement there might be that I need a search field to appear somewhere on my site so that a user can enter a query. So that might be the actual nitty gritty uh, detailed requirements. Next up is uh, getting to work. So actually taking those tickets uh, that you've, or those stories, excuse me, with their requirements, queuing them up and starting to, uh, to work on those. And this may seem very sequential from sort of a beginning to end, but it's important to note that user stories are a little bit more, um, more iterative. So first and foremost, before starting that work, you wanna prioritize. So you wanna identify what are sort of your top priority user stories, queuing those at the, at the top of your list and starting to work on those, those first. Next up is actually actioning those items. So starting to build the functional things that are defined as part of those user stories. And then revisiting and refining. So after the, the work's actually been completed, you may feel that you need to revisit some of the other work that's been queued. Maybe there was something that was learned in the course of working on those user stories. Uh, and you need to go back and refine some of your, uh, your previous user stories. Or maybe you created something and it didn't quite come out as expected and you wanna make some revisions to it. So it's important to always keep in mind that it's worth going back, revisiting and refining your existing user stories. And then repeat. So it's very cyclical, uh, starting with prioritize action, revisit, refine, and repeat. And then going right back to prioritizing and going through the list again. And so what does that actually look like? Um, user stories have, have their beginning in Agile. So agile development, um, it's an iterative approach uh, that works really well with the, the flexibility that user stories provide. Uh, and so here in this illustration, we kind of get a sense of, of what that looks like. So the backlog is essentially all of our user stories. And when we prioritize items, we bite off a small chunk of them. So we create a sprint, a list of sprint tasks. So those are the items that you're going to be working on during any, any given amount of time. Working on those items over the course of a sprint. So a sprint is usually about two to three weeks. And then uh, during that time, having regular meetings just to kind of discuss the progress on those user stories. But you'll note that it comes right back to the, uh, the sprint tasks. So over time, the development team or whoever's working on the user stories is breaking off chunks of that, that backlog, queuing up tasks, working on them, rinse, repeat. And throughout that time, they're refining the, uh, the user stories as they learn more or as they, uh, they learn new information. And of course, releasing those items throughout the course of the project as well. All right. I think that does it for me. Does anyone have any questions? And I forgot to mention, I know you folks are probably pretty familiar with it, but there is a, a Q&A box down there. A couple of people have left questions, but if you have any, feel free to to pop in there. And, and can, uh, Tim, just to kick things off, I've got a few questions here. So uh, first off, where do you build user stories? In Excel or Jira? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. So very often uh, teams will use a proper project management tool, like say Jira to your example. Um, other examples might be like Trello. 
Uh, but you can also just use a spreadsheet. There's no reason that you need to use professional software to create user stories. A spreadsheet, it's flexible, it's easy, it allows you to sort the columns. So um, it's, it's really the simplest solution. That was one of the other questions. Maybe you can um, uh, bring up after, at the end of this, some example user stories they can see. Uh, but let's, let's add to the next question is, can you add more detail around like how to define the epic and how to write the epic? Yeah, so an epic doesn't necessarily need to have any specific uh, format around it. So an epic is really just a high level categorization of work that needs to be performed. Uh, so if you're looking at a website, some, some common epics that you might hear about are things like say search or maybe there's a home page or maybe there's a publications page. Um, just identifying those key areas that are sizable enough to, to collect and categorize a number of different user stories are usually enough to warrant being their own epic. You might include just a brief definition of what that epic pertains to, but they don't really have a, a traditional format or formula that they, that they need to have. Okay, and can you give an example of that? Like would it be, what would be a, an example of an epic? Yeah, so an example of an epic might be, say, publications. So maybe your site has a page that's dedicated to presenting publications. Uh, on that page, there may be brief teasers for all the different publications that live on your site. Maybe there's also features that allow users to search or filter for publications. So all of those user stories would sort of fit into that, that epic. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so how much time does it take to build out user stories? It's a, it's a good question. This is, this is one reason why it's important to, to remember that you can be iterative. So you can always sort of go back and refine your user stories or create new user stories as, as needed. But typically it can take anywhere from one to two weeks to, uh, to create user stories. And then always worth remembering just going back and refining them over time because as the team makes progress, there's going to be, uh, there's going to be things learned and maybe new features or, or new user stories that need to be created. But usually the first list can be created in about one to two weeks. Okay. And the humans, how do you engage with all of the stakeholders? Yeah, so this, this is uh, getting a little bit more into sort of agile uh, development. So this is why it's important to have a point person that's well versed in the, the needs of the organization. It can be very tricky to get all the stakeholders sort of on the same page. So having uh, somebody take that initial crack at user stories is, is really, really important just to kind of give the team a point of, uh, of jumping off. Once the user stories have been written, they, the stakeholders may be involved in the reviewing of those uh, just to help refine them. But just getting to that point of having something down on paper can be tricky for a large team, which is why it's, it's handy to have somebody uh, act as the point person in the beginning. Okay. And is that the writer? It is the writer. It's the person that, that writes the user stories. Okay. Great. So we have a great question from Samantha. How do you approach user stories that have multiple audiences that you're communicating to? Yeah, that's, that's also a great question. When you, when you start to get into specific audiences, say, I, I've said users multiple times here, but if you've got somebody like faculty or, or students or patients uh, that you need to sort of speak to, you would swap that out in your user story. You take users out and put patient there. So for, for example, as a patient, I need to find information on the latest research so that I can be up to speed on progress that's being made in cancer, for example. Um, so speaking to those specific audience groups is, is an important part of, of user stories. If you have something that speaks to multiple uh, groups, you might just uh, combine all those audience groups as part of the user story. So as a patient or a faculty member, uh, et cetera. Okay, uh, and that means there's probably a lot of user stories. So how many like user stories do you have for the average project? So for a smaller project, I'd say in the realm of 60 to 80, and then for larger projects, it's probably going to be upwards of 120. So it really depends on how complex the, uh, the project is. 
If you've got fewer than that, then there, there might be some, um, some cause for concern. It might just be that some of the, question, the user stories are a little too vague and maybe they need to be broken down into more granular, granular parts. Okay, okay. All right, so um, in, in how you set up the user stories, it sounds like you put them into epics and then when you come forward with development, you're adding them all the time. Is there a point when you just stop using user stories or are you using them for testing or what is the life cycle of a user story? Yeah, so user stories can really be used for anything. I mean, we've, we've focused primarily on development here today and that's because it's traditionally used in a, in a development environment. Um, but user stories can really be used for anything from design to user testing um, to even uh, even things around the house. I've known people that have used user stories to write about uh, projects they're doing around their house. So like as a chef, I need a professional grade stove so that I can cook some awesome food. So they can really be, be used for anything um, beyond development. Okay. okay. And great question from the audience. Uh, how do you go about prioritizing user stories and how do you know where to start? Yeah, so starting to, there might be two questions here, but uh, prioritizing user stories, so once they're actually written, um, working with the, the, the team, the developers, uh, getting to understand where they suggest you should start. Um, certainly, priorities of the organization come into play, but if you're just getting started, you know, there might be some fundamental things that need to be done first. So maybe you need to set up the hosting environment before you can do anything. Um, so that might be an important thing to, uh, to take into account. So it's one part goals of the organization, but it's also uh, the people that are actually doing the work play a role there too, because there might be things that they need to do in a certain order before they can get to uh, some of those, those goal focused items. And then uh, just speaking a little bit more of like where to start, like actually writing your user stories. So I touched on just knowing the nature of your project, you know, is, a, is it a net new build? Is it an existing site that you're just looking to make improvements to? That kind of helps to define the, the nature of your user stories. So for example, for a net new build, you might want to start focusing on some initial discovery work. So maybe there's some conversations you want to have with stakeholders to better understand their needs. Um, or for just some general improvements. Um, it could start with, with stakeholder work, getting to know like what your content administrator's needs are, or if you already know what they are, um, you can just start writing user stories right away. Uh, and that's a little easier, obviously. So it sounds like you can use user stories not only for you know, functionality, you can also use them for content experiences for the content manager. And a really great question around here was around, um, how do we use user stories to facilitate user testing to really know that we're delivering meaningful content? Like it's how yeah. do user stories play into that? Absolutely. So after, let's just say a, a site is sort of in its pre-launch stages and we want to validate some information. So we might say as a uh, site administrator, I want to make sure that uh, patients can get to X content easily so that they don't spend too much time on the site and get frustrated. So that might be a user story that kind of drives user testing towards validating a patient's user experience on the site and making sure that they can get to the content they're looking for quickly and efficiently. Okay. Um, so, I hopefully I can clarify this. So I know there's a question here about if you're writing if you're writing a user story as a as a person or this I need to do this so I can that. How do you know? How do you start to answer this? So it's I guess it's maybe a little bit of where to start. And you mentioned with stakeholders, could it be like they could um, maybe analyze their current functionality to see what it does as a starting place as well? Yeah, absolutely. That's, that is a great starting point if you already have a site is sort of defining what the things you have currently do. So let's just use a contact form as an example. So as a user, I need a means to contact an organization so that I can ask a question. 
that may seem somewhat straightforward, but there's a lot of different ways a user could do that, right? So they could uh, submit a question via a comment form. They could reach out via an email or a phone number. So the important thing is that that user story is starting the conversation around what is the expected result there. So having that user story first and foremost leads to the conversation, leads to the clarity and the requirements of what is actually expected for the user there. So um, yeah, so hopefully in those requirements, there's greater clarity provided as far as the expected outcome. Great, yeah, exactly. Like Jill says, the contact form is a great example as content editors are not developers. And that's the beauty of user stories is they're written in, you can write them in whatever language really, but in our, in our case, we're writing them in English. And it means that there's a lot of clarity for everybody understanding what's going on uh, and that means that the developers can translate that into whatever they need to, but you're going to get what you want, which is really important when you're communicating with um, the technical folks that are going to bring your vision to life. But this is a great way to call um, stakeholders. We have a term at Canopy called to avoid the poop and swoop, which is that, you know, kind of coming in from a higher stakeholder that hasn't paid attention. This is a great way to get their, their buy in in real terms they understand. So let's, uh, we got time for one more question here. These are great questions. Thank you so much. Is how is design and aesthetics really included in user stories? Yeah, that's a great question, uh, especially design being something that's a bit more subjective, right? So it's probably going to be a little more high level, uh, but it can still define just high level goals for the design, right? So as a user, I need a means to see the latest news on the homepage so I can see latest activity. That helps to kind of define some of the things that we might expect to see in the design. It's still, because design is, I'll say because design is a little bit more subjective, it does still leave a little bit of, of wiggle room for the designer to kind of put their touch on things, but you're at least setting the expectation as far as like what you might like to see on say the home page. So the user stories can help to, to fill in, um, fill in those gaps. Yeah. Sometimes we call that display logic. If we want something to display in a certain way and still have that logic and then the aesthetics could then be applied to that um, base core function because if it looks pretty, it still has to work, right? So, well, this has been such a great pleasure. We wanna keep it um, at time for you folks. We really do appreciate all, um, all, all, of, you, all of you showing up. I, have a, I see a hand raised, but I don't know exactly. Oh, now it's lowered. Okay, we're all good. <laughs> Anyways, if you have any other questions, you know, feel free to reach out. We're here to help. And we've been partners with UCSF for a long time. I know I see some clients on our list here. And uh, if you folks have any questions or want us to get you sending in the right direction, know that we're always a resource. We're gonna send out all these assets via email in the next 24, 48 hours. And Jill on your team is the right resource to go for whatever reason if you don't get it from us. Uh, we'll try to send out personalized emails. So you're gonna get a personal email from me and it should have all the attachments, but if it doesn't, let me know. And Tim, if you wanna just go to the next slide real quick. We have other summer sessions coming up still, and uh, these are the ones you can take a look. We're gonna publish all these assets, so if you can't join us, but we have six more wonderful ones to go. So take a look, and I'm sure we will see you at the next one. So thanks again, everybody, for attending. Have a wonderful afternoon, and, uh, or a wonderful day, and we'll see you very soon. Thank thanks you. Thanks, everyone. Take thanks, care. Thanks, Tim. Bye. Bye-bye.